So the question is, can I duplicate my 3D printed parts using composite mold? And the answer is yes. Basically, you just let the composite mold cool to below about 140 degrees Fahrenheit before you pour over your 3D printed part. And so I'm going to show you this process of duplicating your 3D printed parts with this little mini figurine of a mother and child. I found this design on Thingiverse. You start off by hot gluing your part onto the bottom of your mold box. What you use for a mold box can be anything from the cup like I like to use or a lot of people like to make their own mold boxes using Legos. Uh, you can use aluminum foil that works really well. Uh, pretty much anything. If you're using cardboard or something you want to seal the card cardboard so it doesn't uh, doesn't stick to it. Uh, I use bubble buster to reduce the bubbles from staying on the part. Basically it reduces the surface tension so that the bubbles rise up and away from the part. You can also use a toothpick or a paper clip to get into any crevices in your part that you need to pull the bubbles out of. I melted this composite mold in about a minute, a minute and a quarter in my microwave and I let it cool to blow 140 degrees Fahrenheit and then I poured it over and up over around my part just enough to fill up over the top of it. Bigger parts you want to have a little bit more of a surface on the top of it but for a small part like this just barely has to cover it. Now I just pull off the plastic cup and I push out the original shape, the master part of it. I use my thumbs to push it out of the bottom of it and that pops it right out of it into the into the air. And the awesome part about the composite mold is after I pull this mold out, if I like it, I can use it and I can continue to reuse it as many times as I want or I can remelt it and do it again anytime I want to make different shapes. I'm going to make a rubber casting of the figurine using our soft bait rubber. This is a super soft silicone material that makes a really awesome mold that cures in about 5 to 10 minutes and it's mixed one to one by weight or volume and makes a really really nice part. You can add different colors to it, you can add fillers to it, whatever you like. As I'm pouring this, this is a good time to talk about our other mold making material, the impressive putty. Composite mold and impressive putty are both reusable and remeltable. The impressive putty I would use for a faster cure of urethanes or slightly higher melting temperatures and I'd use the composite mold for clear epoxy resins. Both can be used for other materials. I'd use composite mold if I was going to use plaster and I'd use a plaster additive for that. To match the original color of the 3D printed part, I'm going to add a drop or two of this white colorant. This is our white colorant. Um, you can get this on our website and just mix this up. So now I'm going to mix the silicone soft bait rubber together very well. I'm going to get the sides and I'm going to do this relatively quickly because this cures in about 5 to 10 minutes. And I want to start pouring it within about a minute, a minute and a half at the most. So the cool part about the composite mold is that you can experiment. You can try it with this silicone material. You can remelt it, make another shape. Whatever you want to do, it's really awesome to do. So now we're going to pour it into the mold that we made. Carefully make sure I fill up the whole space of it. And that's the whole process of making a mold. You'll notice I didn't use any mold release on this part. I probably should have used a little bit of vegetable oil or baby oil as my mold release. I can use pretty much anything I want as my mold release. Uh, I didn't in this particular case because I knew that the soft bait rubber doesn't stick that well. Now I'm pushing on the sides a little bit to push out any air that's trapped in, in some of these pockets. So sometimes you'll see a little hand or something that doesn't get filled with the resin. So by pushing it, you're squeezing out the bubble and then the resin gets sucked into it to fill it. It's a great way of making it so that you don't have to do a two-part mold. The transparency of the composite mold is great for those particular applications because you can see where the voids are in the mold. So we let this cure for about 10 minutes and now we're pulling out the rubber casting. You'll see it's a little sticky here but more important is it's stuck underneath the mold but the flexibility of the mold and the flexibility of the rubber allows it so that I can pull it out without breaking it. So the composite mold that I used for this mold, I probably used about 15 to 20 times overall to make different molds just by remelting it and reusing it. And plus I've used it to make the same shape many, many times as well. One more little part. Ta-da! So now we have lots of options with our composite mold and our figurine and our molds. We can make more of these little guys I use this same mold to make a composite cast epoxy resin mold. I'll show you that in a bit here. We can make our own 
army of mothers and childs for our chess set, which would be pretty cool. We could also do this with other materials. We can, at any time, we can melt and reuse the mold anytime we want. Um, we can change the colors of it by adding different colorants or pigments to it. And you can experiment as many times as you want. Here is the mother child as rubber and as resin. This is our composite cast resin, it's an epoxy. Uh, we could use other materials as well for our casting material. And now we've remelted it to make other shapes. Um, here's a few examples of other things that I made with it. And that's the whole process of making molds. If you have any questions, please let us know. Ask below or you can email us. Um, we have an ebook available on our website, so please check that out. Thank you very much for watching and have an awesome day. Oh, and I did forget to mention that this process of duplicating your 3D printed parts using the composite mold will work for pretty much any of the plastics that the 3D printer will use. So the acrylic, the PET, the PLA, these particular parts are PLA. And as these images show, uh, the other casting materials that composite mold can be used. And, and yes, you did see chocolate right there. Composite mold is food safe as long as you don't use it for the resin and then make the chocolate. You don't want to do that. You don't want to eat the resin. Thanks a lot. Have a great day.